Hello there, fellow humans. Welcome to another shop review. Is there anything worth buying or should you save your gold? Let's find out. The resource section starts off with 180 days of premium time and 10 million credits and also 500 cooldown boosters for 17,500 gold. Now you can no longer obtain over 90 days of premium time in the shop regularly. There used to be a time where you can get up to 360 days, but this is essentially the only way now to get large amounts of premium time. Now I would not necessarily recommend this if you are a regular player, because the cooldown boosters can be very helpful, but they are best reserved for raiding battles and tournaments, and the 10 million creds is enough for one tier 10 with equipment, so 17,500 for that value. There are better options out there, especially because credits tend to have a very bad gold value. And the winner's kit, something like this, can make a lot of sense if you want to grind more tier 10s, or any other vehicle for that matter, the gold can be very useful to, for example, buy a new premium tank or upgrade your crew. 75 times fives, that is a lot of tanks that you can research with that if you play them wisely. And then obviously you also get the snippets for the season and then the free XP booster, the combat XP booster are also incredibly useful. The now gone KV-5 and T-77 offer is still unbeaten. It was two of the very best performing tanks in the game at only 10,000 gold. So not a bundle like this is going to be able to challenge that, unfortunately. It costs 1,000 gold more than the KV-5 and the T-77 and the Skoda. Well, it can be described as it's not quite the Progetto 46. And... Well, it can certainly be played well in the right hands. It is not a vehicle that is essentially worth spending on, especially because it was available for free not too long ago in certain ways. The Lerve is an excellent vehicle for credit grinding. However, overall, it isn't the best of tanks, and there are other tanks that you can certainly play better with, like a T-77, like a T-54A2, like a Chimera. Essentially, what you have to do here is you have to outplay the Lerve's actual performance level to get the extra credit coefficient because if you do less damage the extra credit coefficient isn't really going to help you all that much it's more of a sniping heavy tank which might sound weird but that's essentially what it is and that's what wargaming has been calling it for years at this point now excellent accuracy 310 alpha damage a good penetration for its type an 8 degrees of gun depression with very good turret armor makes you able to play this vehicle hull down quite well. And even though it is very slow, so don't get yourself into a position you can't get out of. Don't go too aggressive with this tank because that's not what it's built for. This bundle is not the best. It is not what I would recommend because there have been better bundles that include the Lerve before. This is not the most ideal way you can obtain them. Then we get to the clickbait FCM50T. Why do I call it clickbait? Well, because it doesn't really have all that much armor for a vehicle of this type. It is one of the remaining subpar tier 8 medium tanks from very many years ago that simply haven't been updated with the times and are now overshadowed by much better vehicles such as Centurion 5-1 that offers much more well-rounded performance. The M60, as always, remains a waste of money due to its not premium credit coefficient, which means you buy a slightly different M48 pattern, and while the M48 pattern is perfectly average, this vehicle is also perfectly average without any proper good credit coefficient. There is zero redeeming things for the M60 to purchase it, because not only do you not gain any new gameplay experience with it, they also don't even make credits. Then the tank hunters are, again, very specific to the player. If you enjoy non-armored tank destroyers and are a good player, then this is an interesting bundle. And I don't say I don't say good, I say interesting, because these are vehicles that can be a challenge to not necessarily make credits with, but to challenge yourself at a playstyle that you might enjoy. But obviously, if you don't already own vehicles such as the Borsig, for example, then I don't recommend picking up things like this, because if you wouldn't enjoy something like the Borsig, you wouldn't enjoy this one either. 7,500 is a very cheap offer. There is not much else of substance in here. The times fives are once again locked to the vehicle, so the majority of the XP is going to be wasted as elite XP on the vehicle, unless you convert it with gold. So, locked times fives, 
aren't really that amazing, don't recommend purchasing it for anybody, really. Unless you already know that you're going to like it. If you don't know that you're not going to like it, you don't like it. If you want the T77, it's still here. And as always, reminder to open your free containers, because those are very useful, because they're free and you can open them all the time. We have the rest of the containers. You already know my opinion on those, that they are very terrible, so... Yeah. Well, then there's also the Battle Pass, which now includes a Borsig camouflage and a imposter avatar. Now, this sort of ties in with the uh, KPZ, so if you're a really huge Borsig fan, it's your week. Would you like to own a marginally improved Centurion 1 for way too much money? Then the STRV81 is the perfect tank for you. Do you like gambling away your precious gold for essentially no return? Because collect them all containers and the mystery boxes are the worst types of containers in the game. Great, the only things of proper value in here will most likely be the free XPs and also the times 5 XPs here. Whereas something like this is, um, yeah, you should, you should be paid to use this kind of thing, to be honest. So it isn't really worth it. This is the kind of vehicle that if we put it into the shop for 6,000 gold, you're like, if you really like the Centurion... You really, really like the Centurion? That's the tank for you. Now, gambling is bad. No matter the way you look at it. However, there are always, obviously, going to be tiers to gambling. In this case, you have an 80% chance of getting 2,000 gold for below its regular sale price. Oh, well, that's not all that bad. Uh, the ML 1951 is a very solid vehicle. 350 is less than what 2,000 gold would normally cost. So in that case, it's completely up to you whether you buy it or not. But for one euro less, you can just get a 2,000 gold like that. So that's better. Two, two minute bell. Mm. Literally fucking waste of time. And I truly do love the game's current matchmaker. Three tanks are dead. Now, while being very large can be an advantage in certain situations, if it gets too big, it's gonna hurt. And that's exactly the case for the FCM 50T. And it can be seen in two different ways, right? If you play gravity mode or mad games or any of those fun modes, it is gonna hurt the enemy light tanks quite a lot because this thing is pretty damn massive, can ram really well. And even though it's not the fastest of tanks out there, it's definitely fast enough for such a big chunky boy. Definitely doesn't also have the non-existent armor of an AMX CDC, even though you're still going to get penetrated by pretty much every gun in the game anyway. So here's the big problem with this vehicle, right? It's not outstanding. It's large, but the gun is very mediocre compared to other tier rate medium tanks. And here's the thing about premium tanks. If a premium tank is worse than a tech tree vehicle, it's not even worth considering. If a premium tank is equal to a tech tree vehicle, it can be interesting if that is exactly what you want to earn your credits with. And there are some premium tanks that are better than the tech tree tanks. And those are the ones that are truly worth your money. This is very much one of it's just like a massive fat medium that you could just essentially get into a Pershing. And even though, yes, you'll have less penetration, you have some level of turret armor and also general usability. Whereas this thing is just massive and pointless. But for the fun modes, pretty much similar to the VK-168, that is essentially also useless in standard battles, this can be a very great fun mode tank, if that's what you're into and if you're looking for something of that sort. But don't take this vehicle serious in regular battles because, yeah, it's not very good at anything, really. And that kind of makes it pointless. So let's find myself the T20 prototype. Always isolate the enemy tanks, right? You don't want to fight multiple enemy vehicles at the same time. Always fight one by one by one, and then win each every single 1v1. And that's how you get a lot of damage by fighting five tanks at the same time, because that's how you die. Or by simply just being a little beak and shooting at tanks that don't look at you. Just like that. Just gonna dive on the prototype probably not gonna get the kill because the or I am gonna get the kill because the BZ is somewhat sleeping now T-34-3 is also not doing anything the new matchmaking is doing great things for the balance of the game we can clearly see that so um yeah I mean luckily I have given up on 
playing for damage and stats two years ago. I sort of started realizing that, wait a minute, I'm supposed to have fun. Stats, don't get me laid. And they mattered nothing. So, if I would care about my stats, that might be relevant, but I really don't. So, let's have a fifth kill here, because why not? Or just pen the... Oh, he hit the same spot I hit, apparently. But now I should be able to just go up there. Load the Pramo. This time I'm going to actually aim. Yeah. I mean, it could work. Just like any other vehicle, it can work. But when it comes to value, this is quite a bad choice. And remember, size is not always an advantage. 